Binding is a thin strip of material that surrounds a soundboard on a ukulele or guitar. To do it the way I'm showing you, you'll need a set of router bits with a bearing set you can get from most luthier supply stores, and you also need a trimmer. You can use pre-made binding, but I'm preparing my own with a bandsaw and a drum sander. I'm using a lighter coloured timber to contrast with the walnut body on my ukulele. With your router set, you need to choose the correct bearing to match the thickness of your binding. Then adjust the trimmer height to match the height of your binding. When I'm setting up the trimmer, I like to adjust it so it cuts slightly less than both the height and the thickness of the binding. Any time you've adjusted the trimmer, I would suggest testing it out on a scrap bit of material before you use it on your actual workpiece. If you're happy with the cut and the binding fits well, you can start work on your ukulele. So clamp your instrument to a bench, check for clearance on the clamps, and then you can begin routing. You should note that this setup is for a flat soundboard rather than a radius soundboard. If you're using a radius soundboard, you would need to use a side guide on the trimmer. You may have noticed that the neck is already attached to the body at this point. This means that it's not possible to route all the way around the body. So you need to use a chisel to complete the job. Take your time with this process with a nice sharp chisel and do your best to try and extend that cut slightly past where the neck begins. This will help hold the binding in when you're gluing it and it'll also look a lot better. It's not an easy task to do this bit so you may want to employ the use of a Stanley knife. When you're done you can check if the binding fits. It's not always needed but you may need to soften up the binding so it gets around all the radiuses of the ukulele. Get prepared for gluing by ripping off lots of strips of tape. Then apply the glue over short sections at a time and start putting the binding in place. As you're moving along, use the tape to hold the binding in position. When you're almost all the way around, mark out where the end of the binding needs to be and remove the excess material. Finish off the gluing and taping and you can leave it to dry for a few hours. And once it's dry, all you need to do is remove the tape and sand it back. 